inhabitants. To those of us who may have visualized Tokyo as it has often been visualized in Western operettas and plays, this is perhaps a disillusioning revelation, for we know sections of cities in our own country that are as oriental in outward appearance, at least, as Tokyo. Nevertheless, in spite of what we see here, Tokyo is inwardly oriental. Her people may have surrounded themselves with Western architecture, Western machinery, and all the other foreign trappings, but fundamentally, they are still loyal to the ancient traditions of old Nippon, and the undying philosophy of the East is still the chief inspiration for their thoughts and deeds. On September 1st, 1923, occurred the worst disaster in the history of Japan, the earthquake and fire which caused so much destruction in Tokyo that a great number of its buildings had to be rebuilt, and this may account somewhat for the many new and imposing edifices that may be seen all over Tokyo today. Behind all this great modern show, however, there is still to be seen in the heart of Tokyo a picturesque little replica of old Nippon, the ancient moat which surrounds the imperial palace and Tokyo residence of his imperial majesty, the emperor of Japan, who is said to be a direct descendant of the sun goddess and the 124th emperor in deity by order of birth and succession, thereby making him the oldest living member of a ruling dynasty in the history of mankind. The palace itself is approached by a double bridge over which none but members of the royal family and the most elite may cross.